Bio has actually been supportive of embryonic stem cells since their first derivation in 1998. As far as our researchers, both our publicly and privately funded researchers are concerned, the more tools that we have to better understand disease and how disease develops, the better we are at developing therapeutics to actually uh, prevent the onset of disease or treat the actual disease in a patient rather than just the symptoms, which is what we primarily treat right now. Everybody has different uh, uh, pathways with Parkinson's disease. Uh, some people have tremors. Uh, some people are uh, more dominant with rigidity, which is my biggest problem. I have tremor and rigidity. Um, other people uh, never show any tremors, but they might have a lot of balance problems and movement problems. So with everybody, it's a little bit different. So if you have an embryonic stem cell, you can send it down the path of derivation to be any kind of cell in your body. Induce pluripotent stem cells, the iPS cells, while very promising and certainly an important research tool because you can have what are considered um, disease-specific lines using those cells, they still don't have the same um, possibility offered to them that embryonic stem cells do, especially for a therapeutic intervention because of the way that they would, um, you would be, they would be able to multiply in a petri dish. So while all the stem cells are important, uh, adult stem cells are critical, cord blood stem cells, which is another form of adult stem cell, uh, iPS cells and embryonic stem cells. The big thing that I hear from patients and from our researchers is that we just don't know where the answers are going to come from, so we don't want to limit the possibilities. Uh, the Parkinson Action Network supports stem cell research uh, because it, uh, today it has the, the best chance to find a cure for Parkinson's disease. It also allows uh, um, better uh, insight into uh, how to treat the disease from looking at the, uh, the actual cells that uh, misfold or, or have other problems that develop Parkinson's disease, uh, looking at uh, environmental toxins and how they react with uh, the dopamine production cells, things that they couldn't do um, prior to an autopsy uh, before uh, the development of embryonic stem cells. When we talk about therapeutic intervention and we think about the safety profiles of, of toxic chemical drugs, which is what small molecule drugs are right now, we get the side effects. In Parkinson's, you have dyskinesia. Your, your, your medication starts changing your entire chemical makeup. If you're actually using something that belongs in your body, like what biologics are, the safety profile is completely diminished. And you know, so we're not really actually just treating symptoms, we're treating disease. And it's just a horse of a different color. If you think about the medications and therapies for Parkinson's disease right now, uh, Carbidopa, levodopa came out in the 1960s. That's Cinemet is the gold standard for treatment of Parkinson's disease, and every treatment, uh, including deep brain stimulation that's come out over the past uh, 10 to 20 years, has all been to supplement Cinemet and the uh, replacement, the synthetic replacement of dopamine in the brain. Uh, so there hasn't been any, you know, ma any real change in the treatments in 40 or 50 years. Stem cell uh, research will hopefully bring out some new therapies and eventually a cure for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and other diseases. Bio has a wealth of information on this, which is just bio.org. We have an I Am Biotech uh, website, and then of course the Michael J. Fox Foundation and the Parkinson's Action Network will tell you what's uh, in the latest and greatest in Parkinson's research.